Greetings and welcome to this next installment of Introductory 3D Modeling with SolidWorks. We're going to start on the screwdriver now. now hopefully you have already done all of the saw models and the assembly and the drawing. So I will expect that you know a few extra things so it's not completely introductory here. So this is the handle for the screwdriver. Notice how I've changed some of the default parameters so that it's kind of transparent and we have multiple colors on different sections. But that's the easy part. In fact, this one is not too bad. It might look a little complex, but if you notice over here, I've got one, two, three, four features. So let's dive in and start a new one. One of the things you might notice on your drawing is that there might be not as many dimensions as you might hope for, but you should take a hint at the orientation of the dimensions that are there and also from the shape of the handle itself. This is going to be a revolved boss base. So I can go straight from features to revolved boss base, but it looks like a complex sketch. So I'm going to start with the sketch. And as a revolved boss base, I'm going to actually make an axis first on the front plane and the top plane. My green check mark and there's my axis. So now on my front plane I'm going to click sketch and click on sketch. Now the next question is where should the origin be? Well I'm going to put it at the very far end of the handle. So we'll start off with a center line as we should do on a Revolve part, hit escape. I'm going to start there. Go up here. Okay, now I have a little flat, and then there is a, uh, a curve here somewhere. So I'm going to go up here and use the three point arc. Now the diagram does not give me any help whatsoever on the location of the center. It just gives me a 24 dimension across here. Now I also notice that that 24 goes to a point and then it continues up. Well, just a quick hint. That is actually a straight line for a little bit. Then we're going to come over here, come out back and do the combo to there. Now I drew it a little bit short. I'm going to take my center line, drag that out, take this point, drag it to there, and I have my basic shape. Now I'm going to dimension it. Five millimeters there, and I have an overall length of 100 millimeters, and that makes all of this kind of messed up. That's okay. Now remember, we want to use diameters, so I'm going to click here, to here, and instead of making a radius here. Going to make a diameter here of 27 millimeters. From here to here. Going to make that 24 millimeters. And from here to here. Now watch this carefully. I'm just going to click here. This not, is not the number I want. 
I'm just going to click the green check mark. Watch over here. I'm going to go to leaders. And the first arc condition, the default is to go from center to center. But I want them to go at a minimum distance. And it will go from the one tangent to the other, the minimum distance. So don't forget that neat little spot, leaders, arc condition. And that's going to be 20 millimeters in diameter. Okay, so now I've got some in the black. Go from here to here. Gonna make that 24. Okay, hit escape. Now I want this curve to come down straight on top of this line. So I could make a tangent line to this arc and then define it to be 90 degrees or something like that. But what I really want is this center point to be on this line. If that center point of the arc is on this line, then for sure this will come down and make a perpendicular connection at this point. So I'm just going to drag this up. Oh, it's not like in that. Oh, there it is. And that turns into black. On the drawing, you should see that there is a light line dashed over to here. And that means that this point and this line are coincident. So we're going to click on that, click on that, make them coincident, and everything turns black. And now that I am done with that, I will check it over, maybe move my dimensions in so they're a little easier to read. And that's just the center point for the arc. And my sketch is all set. Now I just need to click on my sketch, click on features, click on Revolve Boss Base, and all the defaults are just fine. I'm going to hit my green check mark, and everything looks good. Okay, so the next step is to cut into this end the square hole. So I'm going to make an extruded cut. I'm going to show how to do a feature by clicking on the feature first, then sketching. If you make a mistake, you'll be bumped out of feature mode. You'll have to go in, go sketch, then feature again. But it saves you all about one or two clicks. So when I click on the feature, I have not selected a sketch like I did with the Revolve Boss Base. So it says, well, I need a sketch. Do you want to select one that you've already made? Or do you want to create a brand new one? So I want to create a brand new one. I'm going to select that face. And I want to orient my view towards it. Make a sketch of a square. I'm going to select each of these first, make them equal, dimension that to six millimeters. And there are a couple of different ways of making sure this is all set on the very center. If I click on center line and I go from one corner to the other, hit escape, then I right click on the center line, click on select midpoint, then I hold the control key down after zooming in, and I also select the origin. So I'm going to make them coincident, and now the square is all set. It knows that that these are vertical and horizontal, so we are done with that. 
All that's left now is to tell it how far to go in. And we'll set that at 50 millimeters. And we are done. Okay, so we have that cut extrude. Now one more cut needs to be done. This one is a little confusing geometrically, but it's not too difficult to actually construct. So I'm going to go to sketch and I need to select a plane, which I'm going to do right there again. And this time I'm going to go to this neat thing, to polygon. It's very handy to make hexagons. And I'm going to make a hexagon that has sides that are tangent to that first surface here that we have. I'm going to hit this button, which is Previous View, and I'm going to make sure that these sides here, I'm going to hit Escape first, make sure this side is vertical, and also make it so that is tangent to that edge, and now it knows exactly what size and orientation this is supposed to be. Don't forget, I also made sure that the center was placed on the origin there. So that's another way that it knows. So if your sketch is still all blue, it's probably because you didn't put the center right on the origin. Well, this sketch is not complete. We have a little detail that we need to uh, put in. But for now, I'm just going to hit OK on that sketch. I'm going to go to Features and extruded cut. And I don't want to cut what's on the inside. I want to cut what's on the outside. So see that little arrow? Okay, and I want to cut everything. So through all. And then we have the basic shape of our handle. But the screwdriver handle that I was basing this off of actually has some little undercuts here. So I'm going to change the shape of my sketch by either right clicking on the sketch and going up to edit sketch or simply right clicking on the feature and going up to edit sketch. And I'll go back here and I'm going to add a small detail. Zoom in and I'm going to draw a line from here straight down to here. Notice how sometimes when you zoom in it doesn't actually get onto the edge and it looks like the edge is somewhere else. That's because these computers don't actually make circles. They make polygons. They make uh, polygons with lots of sides, so they look like circles. But by the time you zoom in, it might not be so circular. So I'm going to take this one and draw it straight down as well. Hit Escape. And now I'm going to go to my Convert Entities. I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to convert the shape of this big circle into an entity. So I click on it like that. Well, I think I hit the face instead. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to see if I can get to the edge here. There it is, the edge. I'm going to hit my green check mark. And now I have a big circle. Now, I don't want the whole circle. I just want it to go from this point to this point. So if I can cut it down to size, that would be great. And that's what they have this button for, Trim Entities. I'm going to click this. I'm going to 
click, hold, and drag. See how I'm making a little line? As soon as I come across a solid line or even a construction line, it will get rid of it from one point to the next. So there's one. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click, hold, drag. There goes another part. Now notice I've got this extra stuff from the hexagon here too. I can do the same thing. I'm going to click, hold, and drag, getting rid of that part. Click, hold, and drag, and then continue dragging across there. And then I'm going to do the same thing there. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here because I want to use the center here. I'm going to make a center line coming from the origin all the way down. Hit escape. And now I'm going to make these entities symmetric. And finally, I'm going to make them two millimeters apart. Now, what does that do for us? Oh, I see the problem. Notice when I put that whole circle in the uh, sketch, I thought when I was all zoomed in, that I was cutting out the entire rest of the circle, but instead it intersected the hexagon. So much of the circle remained. So I'm going to go back to Trim Entities and cut them all out. Sometimes makes you wonder if it was worth doing it that way. Eh, it often is. Okay, let's see if that will help this time. Oh, much better. Okay, so now I have one indented edge there. Now for the rest. Okay, do I have to do that same thing for all six? Well, this is where we can use the circular sketch pattern. This will allow us to take entities of the sketch and copy them around in a circle. So the first thing we need to do is pick a circle. So this looks like a good circle here. And then we need to choose entities. Now it also chose the circle itself. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to pick that and that and that. So for some reason it chose to go about point 0.1. I'm not sure if I like how it chooses that. So I'm going to choose that edge since I had a hard time selecting the arc. I want to make sure that I'm getting what I want. Now I want to have six of these, but if you'll notice, it's showing four over 360 degrees with equal spacing, which is what it is. But this is the little bit that it's looking at. So I'm going to make that go up to six. And hopefully we will see it show up. Oh, now it's not showing up at those locations. They're showing up all over the place. So it probably has to do with what I'm selecting here. And this is probably one of those reasons that I really don't like using the circular pattern in the sketch mode as much. But let's try to see if we can 
change it. There we go. So it's going around that edge. And there they are. There we are. So sometimes you gotta try things a couple times to make them do what you want it to do. I've got 360 degrees, equal spacing, six, and looks pretty good. Okay, now we have to go to each one of these and use that trim entities. And that's how we had some uh, problems with being over to find down in the corner. But once I deleted some of these parts, everything was better. Almost done. Okay. Hopefully this is everything we needed. I'm sure it will tell us if it's not. And we have been able to cut through all those. And again, we only used one dimension. Yes, we used a lot of relations. If you'll notice, a lot of relations down here. And each one of these is known as a patterned line. And we have the general shape of the handle. Now all we need to do is change the properties. So notice on here we can pick different parts. We can pick the entire model to do something or we can just pick different parts of it. Um, from just that face to just that feature to the body which is sometimes part of the model although in this case the model only has one body. And I can click on advanced over here. I can go over here to service finish and mapping and then color image. All those have different things they can do. Illumination will allow us to change the transparency. So that's how I get a slightly transparent figure. So we'll make this 0.75. I can type it right in if I want to. A green check mark. And there I have my nice clear acrylic. And if I click on that, hold the control key down. And select all of these, right click on them, go to appearances, go to just those faces, and I can find a nice red. And I can do the same thing with these two faces. Appearances, just the faces, and then I can find a nice blue. My green check mark. And I think I might make this axis go away. I'll just hide it. Right click and hide. And go to view. Remove temporary axes. And I'm down to everything I need for this model. In review, we use some techniques we've seen before with a revolve, taking the sketch, using appropriate relations, making sure that this point was on that line, and revolving it around. That's what we ended up with. Then we simply cut a six by six millimeter square 
through 50 millimeters using as few dimensions and as little work as possible. So we just use that neat uh, construction line to make that happen, centering it on the origin. Then this sketch was a little harder. We used the polygon sketching entity to make a hexagon. And then we created this small detail, cutting off some of the hexagon and using the trim entities function. Once that was done, we were able to uh, use the circular sketch pattern. In the process, we had a hard time figuring out what it was trying to ask us for when it was moving them around in the circle. We chose a couple of circles and found one that worked. Well, I hope this video helped you. And I look forward to moving on to the screwdriver project with the shafts and other attachments.